There are a few things to be discovered when it comes to the rules and conditions of this judgment, judgment for rewards. First Corinthians 3, 11 to 15. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. So, if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burnt, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. We see a few criteria here. Our salvation is guaranteed, there is no problem with it, but our works that we performed in our lifetime will be judged by some form of fire. This fire will qualify what is acceptable and what is unfit. What is acceptable will be rewarded, and what is not acceptable will be burnt, and the person will suffer damage, as they will not get the reward. This is not the right time to talk about rewards. However, they are connected with the position and authority we will hold in the Millennial Kingdom and in the New Jerusalem. Generally speaking, we will be getting different rewards in terms of their quality, scale and dimension. So what are the criteria? First of all, our motives. Friends, this is extremely important. If you are a person born of the Holy Spirit, the most important factor is why are you doing this? What is your motivation? Someone says, I love, but I say, okay, what are the motives of your love? If you do something, what are the motives to do so? So the first thing the fire will test are the motives of our works of our actions and now the second criterion is obedience to the truth of Christ this means that our actions and our ways of thinking in relation to the revealed truth will be tested whether we stand in the truth, which comes to us by revelation, by the way, and how we act according to this revealed truth, this is the measure of what we will get. Everything that is outside the truth will be burnt, even if it, if there was something good or nice, even if we do humanitarian things, but they are not based on the truth and they do not come from the revelation, they will all be burnt. The fire will consume all of these things. We won't get any reward for them. That's why it's so important to act here on earth only based on revelation, not because there is a particular need. There are many different needs around. Do you understand? We, as God's church, we do not meet the needs of the world. We, the church of the living God, are moving in revelation from God. We stand on the revealed truth and act on the revealed truth, not because there are needs in the society. And the third criterion is the amount of the power of the Holy Spirit we have released. Our actions, our ministry, and also our growth, everything should be based on God's power instead of our natural abilities. Everything that's based on our natural abilities will burn. It will all be destroyed. Sometimes I hear people say that someone preaches magnificently. It does not mean that person is a good preacher or evangelist. It only means that the person is a good orator. 
there are orators and anointed preachers, okay? Somebody is a great speaker and they spoke superbly when they were in the world, now they do it as well. Have a look at how the stock exchange brokers are good at talking, for example. If you let them talk behind the pulpit, they will talk everyone's ears off. But remember, this guy is a broker. This is what he does, okay? The third criterion is the amount of God's power that has been released. So to sum up, the criteria are our motives, obedience to the revealed truth, and the amount of power of the Holy Spirit we release. Now there are two levels or two aspects in which we will be judged. The first one is our personal life, the state of our sanctification, how we have changed our soul, our mindset, to what extent we have changed our psyche, as it entails changes in our life, to what extent we have changed our mind, our emotions, our decision making, how much have we changed by God's truth and God's power. Secondly, our ministry will be judged. On both of these levels, both aspects, we will be judged based on the criteria we discussed before. So we have covered now the first, second and third act of God's judgment. Now let's talk about the fourth judgment. Friends, this is interesting. Eternal judgment, second scene. Let's have a look at the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30 verses 3 to 9. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will bring my people Israel and Judah back from captivity and restore them to the land I gave their ancestors to possess. These are the words the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. I heard a cry of terror, a cry of fear and not of peace. Ask and see, can a man give birth to a child? Why then do I see every man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor? Why is everyone so pale? How awful that day will be. No other will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke of their necks and will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. Instead, they will serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. The second scene of God's judgment, of the eternal judgment, is the day of trouble for Israel during the terrible tribulation. After the church is raptured, after the souls and spirits of God's people are called up to face the judgment seat of Christ, here on the earth a great tribulation will take place. We, the born-again people, will be waiting in heaven until the time of tribulation ends. It will be in a part of heaven when we will be able to live in our glorified bodies. Do you know that Jesus in heaven lives in his glorified body? There is an area in heaven when people can move around in their glorified bodies. Till that moment, God's people who died are waiting in heaven in a different area as they are in their souls and spirits, but they do not have bodies. Heaven is a huge space. There are different dimensions of heaven. But when we receive the new bodies, we will be able to move to another part of heaven. There we will be able to stay until the end of the great tribulation on the earth. Now, here on the earth, Israel will be the nation who will suffer the most during the tribulation. They will be greatly oppressed. We will see that Israeli nation is brought back to their land. At the beginning, it will be all wonderful and great. One of the marks of the end of the world will be a reconstruction of Solomon's temple. Antichrist will be a person with a significant political power. 
he will be so friendly to the Jewish people at the beginning that he will even rebuild the Solomon's temple. Where today is the Western Wall or the Wailing Wall, which is the biggest focus point of conflict on the earth, there the Solomon's temple will be reconstructed. First of all, Israel will be brought back to their land. And at the beginning, it will all look great. First, they will say, wow, let's go to live there. There will be the reconstruction of the temple, bringing back the sacrifices. The system of priesthood will be renewed. It will be splendid to start with. And then... At that moment, the devil will hit significantly in the gathered Israel. So the judgment will be that time of a nation, national danger and horrible misery for Israel. Israel as a nation will be judged here on earth by tribulation. Do you understand? This will be God's judgment on Israel. It's not God who's going to grind them down, however, but however, they will be judged. Just, just like us, the people born of God's Holy Spirit, we judge ourselves. Something dies in us. Some, this is tough. We give something up. We turn away from something. We lose some relationships. This can be painful. It's, however, it's not God who gives us the pain, but this present age creates pressure on us and we judge ourselves, okay? Our repentance is a tool of judgment. And similarly, the great tribulation in the future will be a kind of tool used for the judgment of Israel. And what will happen next? God himself will save Israel. At the end of the great tribulation, when they are totally exhausted, God will save them personally. Every Jew will have to confess Jesus as the Messiah, obviously. On the other hand, God will be saving, on the one hand, God will be saving the entire Israel from danger at the end of the tribulation. This will be the time when the millennial kingdom will come, Satan will be bound, the evil powers will be tied up, the enemies of Israel will be crushed. However, every single Jew will have to accept Jesus as their personal savior, individually. Sometimes people ask, do Jews have to accept Jesus as the Messiah to go to heaven? Yes. They do. Every person must do it. There will be a global judgment on the nation, but each Jew will have to accept Jesus as his personal savior, as it's the only option to go to heaven. This is the second scene recorded in the Bible, the judgment of trouble for Israel. And what will happen next? The fifth judgment, the judgment on non-Jewish nations at the end of the Great Tribulation. Some people believe that the Great Tribulation will take three and a half years. Others understand the scripture differently, claiming it will be three and a half years times two, so seven years. I don't know exactly. I only know it will take only a few years, but it will be a complete massacre. A few years of war, a few years of pathologies and the rules of Antichrist. This will be a few years where there will be no Holy Spirit on the earth. During the Great Tribulation, people will turn to God, but these conversions will be slightly different than today. As the Holy Spirit won't be present on the earth, the conversions will be similar to those in the Old Testament. When people seek God, the Holy Spirit will move from the outside. As we know, the Holy Spirit will be taken from the earth together with the church, so he won't be present on the earth during the tribulation. Therefore, conversions will be different. Maybe not more difficult, but there will not be such a spiritual conjunction. It will be a movement of God from the outside. And nowadays, Holy Spirit is present here everywhere. 
uh, he won't be present during the Great Tribulation. At the end of that, the uh, millennial, millennial Kingdom will come and the fifth act will start. This is the judgment on the non-Jewish nations at the end of the Great Tribulation. Where can we read about this? Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 42. It's titled The Judgment Day. It's a long scripture here with God. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. So this will be the judgment before the Christ's throne. Here we can see the end of tribulation and Jesus coming down. And who's coming with Him? We are coming with Him, my friends. We will be looking at this judgment together with the angels. And all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Who are those goats and sheep? The sheep are those people who converted to God during the Great Tribulation and gave the testimony of their lives. So the sheep are those who will repent, and the goats are those who won't. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will ask, answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of those least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Who are those least of the members of Jesus' family? It's the Jews. It's the Jews. Thus, the criterion of this judgment will be conversion to Jesus that is proven by helping the Jews. In this period, in this period of great tribulation, the evidence of being saved by Jesus will be the attitude of being united with the Jewish nation. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. And so on, and so on. And in verse 46 we read, Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. So what we see here is an automatic judgment. Those who will be born again during the Great Tribulation, that's the sheep, and their faith will be proven by the changing of their mindset and behavior, so that they will start helping the Jewish people, they will receive new glorified bodies automatically, and they will join the group of Christ's people. On the other hand, those who will not turn to God, 
who persecute the Jews as anyone who will not be born again during the tribulation will automatically be the enemy of the Jewish nation. So those who will harass Israel, even only in their head, they will receive new bodies of eternal suffering and they will immediately go to Gehenna. They will not go to the temporary place, the land of death, but immediately to the Gehenna, that is the place of the second death, the place prepared for Satan and his angels. So the criterion for this judgment will be the intention towards the Jews as a proof of giving life to God during the Great Tribulation. These things will happen at the very end of the tribulation, so directly before the millennium, that is the coming of the millennial kingdom. Now let's move to the description of the situation during the Great Tribulation. So first, those who give their lives to God during this period and lose their lives because of it, they will go to God. And they will rest in heaven until the judgment before the great white throne. This is interesting. Those uh, righteous ones who give their lives to God and are killed because of it during the tribulation will go to heaven and stay there until the moment when they get the new glorified bodies. Uh, they will be there till the moment of the judgment before the great white throne and they will receive as, as God's people their glorified bodies and the rewards and, and they will join the church uh, the entire body of Christ so those who give their lives to God during the great tribulation and they are alive at the end of this period. So the group I already mentioned, they will be judged by Jesus based on their intention towards the Jewish nation. They will receive new glorified bodies and they will join Jesus and his body here on earth. And during the Millennial Kingdom, they will rule together with the rest of God's people. Those, on the other hand, who do not give their lives to God during the Great Tribulation will receive new bodies, the bodies of eternal suffering, and they will immediately be put into the Gehenna. The period of Millennial Kingdom starts from this moment. I'll tell you very briefly what it is. The Millennial Kingdom will be the time of repair here on the earth. Christ will come down to the earth in his body together with his angels and with the righteous, the righteous people, God's people from the Old Testament and the righteous from the last period of the Great Tribulation. They will come down and put everything into order. We read in the Bible that the devil will be bound for a thousand years and thrown into a prison, into an abyss. And this is the time when Christ will start to rule on the earth for a thousand, for a thousand years in a visible, physical and very tangible way. The Millennial Kingdom will end after 1000 years. And what will happen next? The sixth act of the eternal judgment. We can read about this judgment in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verses 7 to 10. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and to gather them for battle. 
In number, they are like the sand on the seashore. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves, but fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. My friends, what is this phenomenon? Who are those who will be deceived by the devil? This judgment will concern the devil, the Antichrist, and the people who are deceived by him. Who are those people? They won't be the church, nor the righteous of the old covenant, nor to the people who gave their lives to God and they stand till the uh, wait till the end of the great tribulation. Who are they then? This is interesting. There is no certainty on who those nations will be. However, we do have a hint in the Bible about this in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 20. Never again will there be an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. The one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. This is a record of what will happen during the Millennial Kingdom. Isaiah received an insight into the future. There will be some uh, pathological phenomena who, again, will be those people who will surrender to the devil. Well, those will be either descendants of the righteous or the unknown civilizations that will be ruled by God's people. That is my subjective feeling because I had to make an assumption. So they may be the descendants of God's people or the unknown extraterrestrial civilizations who will be under God's people's governance. These people are called as the group of Gog and Magog. They will follow Satan, who will be released at the end of the Millennial Kingdom, and now they will be judged. The judgment will manifest as an immediate strike of God's fire on that group. What will this fire be? This is still unrevealed to me. Um, nevertheless, this fire... Uh, this phenomenon will be will immediately push the devil and all of his followers, the de demonic and human, to Gehenna. The human supporters of the devil will get new bodies of eternal uh, distress or suffering. This will be a huge blow. This whole war under. Armageddon. This will be extremely quick and powerful. The judgment of God's fire will fall on all and destroy everything totally. What I have just described here is the sixth judgment, the eternal judgment. And finally, there will be the seventh judgment. We can read about it in John's Revelation chapter 20, this, uh, verses 11 to 15. This is like a closing judgment that closes all of the judgments. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the great 
and small, the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were, that were in it, the death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. So this is the seventh act of judgment, the last one, the judgment on the remaining dead. It will involve the people who were independent from God and those who died during the Great Tribulation. Those who died during the Great Tribulation and they gave their lives to God, their names are written in the Book of Life. The Book of Life is now opened, the names are found there, they will get new glorified bodies. They will also receive their rewards based on their works, written in the Book of Deeds. They will join the Bride of Christ. Whereas people who were independent from God, who never gave their lives to God throughout the years, people who didn't seek God, who never received any light in the times of the Old Covenant, as you know, God always expects people to seek Him first. So they could get some light and later would wait for Christ to be revealed to the world. But some never wanted that light. Then those in the New Covenant, uh, who never gave their lives to Jesus, when the Gospel was preached on the earth, uh, they all will be judged based on their works. They will get new bodies, the bodies of eternal distress, and they are thrown into Gehenna, in their bodies of eternal distress. Everyone receives suffering according to their deeds. This is important in the second death, the Gehenna. Every creature will suffer according to their deeds. As a man deserved on the earth, he will suffer in the second death. Here the topic of eternal judgment ends and something that is described in the 20th and 21st chapters of the, Re of Re the book of Revelation takes place. There will be a total destruction of the earth and heaven. There is no more reason for heaven to exist. There will be no one there. This is beyond our comprehension now. However, there will be a, great, a new heaven and a new earth. The existing earth and the existing heaven will be completely written off, destroyed. On the new earth, there will be the new Jerusalem, a great city. I won't talk about this today. So when the judgments end, that will be the beginning of something new. A new heaven, a new earth, the new Jerusalem, and the eternal life with God, the unification of the bride with God. At the end, I'd like to read from Romans chapter 11, verse 33, which for me is very tangible at the moment. This is how I experience it. Um, this is about the depth, the richness and wisdom of God. It's written, How great are the God's riches! How deep are His wisdom and knowledge! Who can explain His decisions? Who can understand His ways? 
We have talked about God's judgments. This is something that I touch with my spirit and I have shared this with you. What I received from God and what I shared with you, it totally changed my perception on God's judgments. I can see this in my spirit quite clearly. I would like to encourage you to explore it in your life and enrich your spiritual life based on what you have learned. Friends, this is the last from the series of the elementary principles of Christ. These are just the basics that we have covered in the last six episodes. Uh, let me briefly remind you and summarize it. So, the first, the first from the Christian Foundations is uh, turning away from the dead works. The second is about faith in God, that is trust in God. Uh, the third is the study about baptisms. The fourth is the study about laying on of hands. The fifth one is about resurrection. And the sixth study is about eternal judgments. I encourage you to process this knowledge, to digest it in your spirit, and I hope it will bring benefits to your lives. Thank you for listening to these teachings. Now I would like to thank God that these studies were recorded. Dear Father, I thank you for the series of teachings. Thank you that I could share it with others, that you have put in my heart, I could reveal it to other people. I'm praying now in the name of Jesus that the people who are receiving these words are blessed, Father, a thousand times more than I was blessed with this, with this word. Thank you, my Father, that you always hear my prayers. In the name of Jesus, amen.